Native feminist theories are coming from focusing on responsibilities to land, focusing on responsibilities to our relatives, to our ancestors, and thinking about how what we know from land, what we know from our ancestors, what we know from the obligations that we've been taught to attend to, uh, how that helps us to understand gender violence, how that helps us to understand uh, oppression that is gender-based, oppression that is um, based, uh, that is enacted against trans and queer people. Uh, Native feminisms is a body of work that brings together critiques of settler colonialism and critiques of heteropatriarchy and shows the ways that systems of settler colonialism require heteropatriarchy in order to uh, remove indigenous peoples from our land, in order to um, force indigenous peoples into situations in which we are uh, less able to make claims to our own land, less able to enact our own sovereign traditions. I think it's hard to talk about native feminist, native feminisms as a noun. Yeah. Um, I think it, in some ways, is, is easy to talk about what it, what bodies of work and, and which people's native feminist theories are trying to be accountable to. Mm -hmm. I think that it makes sense to always focus on its responsibilities to land, but not land without people's bodies. And I think that um, it's, a, uh, it's not a tension, but it's a relationship that is always a, a generative relationship between attending to land and attending to bodies which move across land. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've come to Native feminist work because uh, I think it's easy to tell a story like, well, white feminism wasn't doing it for me or something like that. But I think um, I came to Native feminist work because I was, always, I was already doing work in indigenous studies and it made sense for me to read the ways in which Native feminists were differentiating their work from what else was happening in Indigenous studies, too. I understand it as something that is um, res both responding and imagining uh, a, a world that is crafted by our, our, our understandings of sovereignty. And sovereignty is not a translatable mm -hmm. concept uh, to other ontologies. It's, it's. Uh, I've I've been in situations in, in which somebody has said to me, "Oh, well, every time I hear you say sovereignty, I cross that. I mentally cross that out and I turn it into autonomy, not understanding the erasure of moving away from the terms that are really important to us." And uh, in describing Native American studies, this really important essay that Elizabeth Cook Lynn wrote, uh, this essay called "Who Stole Native American Studies," she lays out the projects of Native American studies as being projects that were concerned with indigenous land and indigenous sovereignty. And I think what Native feminist theory brings to those concerns of, indig of indigenous land and indigenous sovereignty is also the ways in which those concerns are enacted, taken up, are, are imagined, aspired to in ways that are gendered, in ways that are um, differently uh, experienced because of constructions of gender, because of ways that our societies, uh, settler societies and indigenous societies understand gender, understand sexuality. I see two-spirit theorizing and two-spirit experience as very much at the center of Native feminist theories. There is a strong sense in Native feminist theory that it, it is working at the intersections of heteropatriarchy and settler colonialism and what it does ask of people who are working with us at those intersections is to think about ways that indigenous women, indigenous queer and trans, uh, queer, trans and two-spirit people are 
part of all of the discussions that we're having about justice, not in ways that merely include us, but, um, but really take up these central questions of, of land, of obligation to land, of relationality, of uh, futurity, indigenous futurity, of the non-permanence of the settler colonial nation state, and really take seriously the kinds of interventions that um, Native people have been making on the settler colonial project since it began. Under the banner of Native feminist theories, there are people writing from lots of different parts of the indigenous world, lots of indigenous parts of the world, who are um, working in order to be in conversation with each other, maybe not using the framework of solidarity, but using a framework of something that my colleague Wayne Yang and I have called contingent collaborations. Uh, collaborations that don't ask for all of the promises of um, forever working together up front, but work together for as long as it's useful to be in conversation. And I do think that what links native feminist theory that's coming out of Australia, coming out of New Zealand, coming out of the US and Canada, is the connection of um, settler colonialism and the experience of settler colonialism, which requ has required a different kind of feminist response because settler colonialism is enacted in ways that are, are very much rooted in gender. So uh, Audra Simpson has written uh, very eloquently about uh, the gendered nature of the Indian Act in Canada, and others have written about um, tribal enrollment policies in the United States as having a dimension with regard to gender that really matter for the future of our nations, matter because they are ascribing value to men and diminished value to women. They matter because they're ascribing continuity of generations, in some cases to men and not to women. Ascribing the, the ability to have a child that is also considered part of, a, of your tribal nation to men and sometimes not to women. And, and those are not our ways of of, of understanding membership. Those are not our ways of understanding continuity. They have been parts of an, uh, aspects of invasion, aspects of settler colonialism that have overdetermined what are our relationships to each other. And so I think that Native feminist work is trying to disrupt the, these aspects, these gendered aspects of invasion that have overdetermined our relationships to each other. I think that Native feminist texts are all also trying to intervene not just on the gendered aspects of settler colonialism, but on the gendered aspects of other indigenous responses to settler colonialism uh, to remind uh, in the case of the um, many numbers, the far too many, always too many numbers of murdered and missing indigenous women in Canada and to remind um, of, of the very gendered ways that violence is enacted um, in settler colonial societies. I worked with my colleagues um, Miley Arvin and Angie Morrill in a, a piece called Decolonizing Feminisms in order to think about what Native feminist theories, uh, the challenges that Native feminist theories offer to other, um, other feminists. And one of the challenges, of course, is to problematize the intersections between settler colonialism and heteropatriarchy. Settler colonialism is not often something that is taken up in feminist studies. And native feminist theories are, are putting some pressure on our feminist colleagues in order to say, hey, we need to attend to the fact that 
all of this is happening on stolen indigenous land. Um, I think that the best versions of native feminist theories also attend to the ways in which settler colonialism works in tandem with anti-blackness. And so it's a, a settler colonialism becomes a process of making property, making property out of indigenous land, making property out of black, black life. Um, another one of those uh, challenges that my colleagues and I raised was to refuse the erasure, the ongoing erasure of indigenous women in myriad in, uh, feminist projects, but to do more than just include us into projects um, that that won't look any different because of our inclusion. And so to really think about what it means to work in contingent collaboration with indigenous people. One of the challenges that we have issued um, is to recognize the persistence the amazing, fulsome persistence of indigenous epistemologies, to recognize that many of our understandings of the places that we live have been available to us since time immemorial and have coexisted alongside settler colonial frames um, since contact. And so what that means is that when we say we need a new way to do this or we need nobody's ever done this before, that it is a way of erasing those indigenous epistemologies which have continuously showed other ways of being in the world, other ways of understanding um, different dynamics. The balance is to try to do that in a way that doesn't appropriate indigenous knowledge, doesn't appropriate indigenous culture. So it's not just taking a medicine wheel and saying now we're going to do a training on the medicine wheel, but again to work with indigenous communities in ways that are mutually beneficial in order to recognize indigenous epistemologies. I think the last invitation that Native Feminist Theories offers to other feminisms is to think about the way the investments that are made, the, the, the cries for justice, the goals and aspirations of feminist projects, and look at the ways that they may invest in indigenous dispossession, may uh, be rooted in um, our continued separation from our own homeland, or may put, uh, put a damper on our ongoing sovereignty projects.